On the 14th of August, 2005, the Greek Air Force deployed fighter jets to intercept a Boeing 737 that was just not responding to communications and was headed straight for the capital city of Athens. The Air Force pilots found the plane flying straight, leveled, and on course. And yet there was no sign of anyone alive on board, except for one man, just one person moving across a plane carrying 121 people. Shocking. Well, the Greeks were shocked too. An aircraft circling for 90 minutes without responding to any communication from ATC and the Greek Air Force. This is a chain of events of how a minor oversight incapacitated nearly everyone on board of Helios Flight 522, triggering one of the most haunting air disasters of all time. Helios 522 took off at 9.07 on the 14th of August 2005, with its pressurization system set to manual, and the AFT outflow valve that is a valve in the tail, is partially open. As the Helios 522 climbed, the pressure inside the cabin gradually decreased. As it passed through an altitude of 12,000 feet, the cabin altitude warning alarm sounded. The warning should have prompted the crew to stop climbing, but it was misidentified by the crew as a takeoff configuration warning, which basically signals that the aircraft is not ready for takeoff. The alert sound is identical for both warnings. In the next few minutes, Several warning lights on the overhead panel in the cockpit illuminated. One or both of the equipment's cooling warning lights also illuminated to indicate low airflow through the cooling fans, which was a result of the decreased air density. Then, the passenger oxygen light illuminated at an altitude of approximately 18,000 feet when the oxygen masks in the passenger cabin were automatically deployed. The captain radioed the Helios Operations Center and reported that the takeoff configuration warning light was on and cooling equipment's normal alternate light was off. The cockpit was a place of frantic activity by this time. The operations center personnel was unable to provide any insight into the problem. Shortly afterward, the oxygen masks dropped in the cabin as well, triggering a master caution warning in the cockpit. But the master caution warning can also indicate overheating systems, and this is what the pilots thought was the problem. By this point, the rapidly thinning oxygen was beginning to affect the crew's ability to think critically without even them realizing. They were not able to react to their surroundings effectively, as neither had put on their oxygen masks. The maintenance engineer asked the captain if the pressurization switch was set to auto, but the captain never seemed to hear the question, and shortly thereafter both pilots lost consciousness. This was the last communication with the aircraft. The aircraft continued to climb until it leveled off at approximately 34,000 feet. Between 9.30 and 9.40, Nicosia ATC repeatedly attempted to contact the aircraft without success. At 9.37, the aircraft passed from Cyprus Flight Information Region into Athens Flight Information Region without making contact with Athens ATC. 19 attempts to contact the aircraft between 10.12 and 10.50 were made, also met with no response. At 10.40, the aircraft entered the holding pattern for Athens Airport, still at 34,000 feet, it remained in the holding pattern, under control of the autopilot, for the next 70 minutes. Meanwhile, an unknown person, now known as Andreas Prodromou, had just turned into an issue of national security while aimlessly circling near Athens. The Greeks were apprehensive and had no clue about the mystery behind the circles. Two F-16 fighter aircraft from the Hellenic Air Force Combat Wing were deployed from NEA Ankyalos Air Base to establish visual contact. They intercepted the passenger jet at 11.24 and observed that the first officer was slumped motionless at the controls and the captain's seat was empty. They also reported that oxygen masks were dangling in the passenger cabin. At 11.49, flight attendant Andreas Prodromou entered the cockpit and sat down in the captain's seat having remained conscious by using a portable oxygen supply. Prodromu held a UK commercial pilot license, but was not qualified to fly the Boeing 737. Crash investigators concluded that Prodromu's experience was insufficient for him to be able to gain control of the aircraft under the circumstances. Prodromu waved at the F-16s very briefly, 
but almost as soon as he entered the cockpit, the left engine flamed out due to fuel exhaustion, and the plane left the holding pattern and started to descend. After around 10 minutes, the right engine also flamed out due to fuel starvation. The plane began to descend into a powerless glide, and Prodromo left the cockpit, perhaps to spend his last moments with his unconscious girlfriend, who was the other flight attendant on the crashing flight. By that point, everyone except Prodromo would have been dead due to lack of oxygen, making him effectively the sole survivor mid-air while crashing. At 12.04 pm, the plane slammed into Gramatico Hill in East Attica, killing all 121 passengers and crew, including Prodromo.